there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you a fun watercolor technique where we use a wax crayon for a resist and we do our resist in layers. This is a lot of fun and um, the supplies that I'm using, these stamps are from our sponsor, TopFlightStamps.com. I'm using dark room door stamps, you can see right here, gorgeous, gorgeous collection of stamps and uh, they're nice and big so they're really fun to color. The cool thing about Top Flight Stamps is they find all of the stamps all over the world and bring them back to us here in the United States. They offer free shipping on USA orders over 50 and I have a coupon code in the video description for you. So check that out if you're going to order. We're going to start by stamping and I'm using a fairly smooth watercolor paper for this. And actually what this is is the double sided, um, what's this Arteza paper, one side is smooth and one is rougher and I'm using the back smooth side for this. And I've got my stamp on a curved block. I'm working at my... Um, at my drafting table, which isn't the flattest surface ever, so I feel like if I have this curved block, it just helps me get a really good impression. So I'm going to give this a really good inking up of my black archival ink, but you can use any waterproof ink that you have. And then I'm just going to stamp it on my watercolor paper. And there, we got a really nice image, and now we just got to let this dry before we do our resisting. Okay, this is nice and dry. This is the white crayon that I'm going to use. And I want you to see like how we have patches of white, yellow, and red on the flowers here. We're going to do our resist in layers. So the first resist that we put down is going, uh, is going to preserve our white. So we only want to do this any place we want really, really light highlights to be. So um, you won't be able to get this colored. So that means if you know you want to have yellow or red or some other color, don't put your wax there. This will be our first layer of resist and wh wherever we put this is going to be white. So now what I'm going to do is grab some watercolor. I'm going to use like a lemon yellow and I'll just scooch this over a little bit so you can see it. These are, you can use whatever kind of watercolors you want. These are the Paul Rubens watercolors. They come in a pretty pink tin, but that really doesn't matter. Use whatever you have. And now what I'm going to do is take a little lemon yellow, and I'm just going to kind of fill in these poppies here. Just the petals, really. Now you can see there where I've put the resist, that is remaining white. So we can paint over everything now, everything at this point, because then we'll put another resist on and we'll protect the yellow areas. Another fun thing you can do, see there's another couple other white areas. Another fun thing you can do is, is uh, if you know this area is going to um, like all be yellow, but you want to add a little bit of interest to it, you can add in like a deeper yellow. So I'm going to go in with some uh, like gamboge or Indian yellow, something that's a little bit warmer. In fact, actually, I'll take this one here. It's even warmer. And I can go and drop that in here and there, right into the wet paint. And it just gives us a little bit of depth, makes it a little more interesting. Also at this point, I want to put a little green in the center. I'm going to use a nice pale permanent green light color. and add some of that in. And now we need to let this dry before we do our next layer of glazing. Okay, now we can do one or two more layers of the flowers. It's completely up to you. I am going to use an orange, which is the red and yellow mixed together. And I am, oh, you know, first I've got to put my glaze on, otherwise it's not going to, to do much here. So I'm going to color over any areas where I want there to be yellow remaining. So I'm basically protecting the yellow areas. And you can put as much or as little of this down as you want. It's nice to have a little bit of yellow in each flower, I think. And now we can go over with the orange. And I think really, um, because I don't like to add this color over a dark color, I don't like to add the, the white wax over a dark color because it's translucent enough over a light color, but when you get on top of the dark colors, it gets a little too, um, 
uh, cloudy looking. If that happens on accident, what you can do is heat it with your heat tool and then wipe it quickly, buff it with a tissue, and that will remove, um, it'll keep the resist there, but it'll remove the excess. And so I'm just going over all these petals again with my orange. And I like red poppies, so we will go in and add a little bit of red to this. Um, and we can, you know, direct it pretty well. I don't have this paper, this paper sopping wet, so where I put the red, it will stay pretty well. It might soften a little bit on edges. So we've got our third layer, but we're not going to wax it again. I'm going to go in with this nice, vibrant crimson color. And I'm especially going to add it near the centers. And I'm just making sure when I put this bright red, I don't have it super watery. I'm just making sure that my lines kind of go with the lines of the flowers. So we get this beautiful, almost batik look. This would be really pretty on carnations or irises. Um, anytime you'd have that, you'd want that kind of like batik look. Now look at how much dimension you have just by using that wax resist in it. And it, it helps because it keeps you from going overboard with your subsequent colors. You know, you know no matter what, you're going to have that yellow and you're going to have that white still preserved. And boy, this one on the bottom is already starting to dry. I think that my paints dry a little bit quicker in the winter because we have the heat on and it's just that the air is a lot drier. If you live in a really dry area too, in the summer you might have a real hard time keeping your keeping your paint wet. This um, is not a really high quality paper, or I'd say it's not an expensive paper. It's very inexpensive, and I like it for card making, uh, especially for stuff like this where you're you're not like really soaking the paper and, you know, being harsh with it. Now, well, Adam, I'm going to go ahead and put some of that green that I used at the beginning right up here over this. Looks like a kind of a postage mark or a stamp or postmark or something. And I'm going to grab, I want to grab a little bit of purple. I've been, I'm just using up the paints that I had left over from making all those cards. So I got some purple mixed down here. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that. And I want to add a little bit in here in the center. Now you could max, uh, you could, I want to say mask. You could, well, yeah, mask. You could mask off with some wax, some of the green areas. But I would just, you can just go in and dab. You don't have to do that for everything. And I'm also going to paint the stems green. Uh, I'm going to use a little sap green for this. And just, and I like to go outside the lines a little bit so I do get that nice green impression. Now also, since I'm using that new green there, I'm going to dab a little bit of that in the centers because it will, um, it's nice when you repeat a color. And I'm going to add a little bit of that into the center here where it looks like we have a square stamp. All right, I let this dry, and now I am going to go over the green here with the wax crayon. It does make it a little cloudy, but I mentioned my trick earlier for dealing with that. And we're going to do a background, and we can always add a little bit more to the flower afterwards if we want to. So I'm going to mix up a puddle of a nice... Um, a nice kind of greenish blue. I'm going to take some phthalo blue or Prussian blue, something that's a little bit more on the green side, and just kind of water it down so I have a nice inky pool of it. Now, if you don't have watercolors, that's fine. You can use, you could press your stamp pad um, to a, like a acrylic block and you could use that. You could use, um, you could scribble out markers and get a palette that way. Use whatever you have for a inky medium like this. You just want to make sure that it's a water-based medium so it will resist. If you used alcohol inks, that really wouldn't resist too well on you. Um, and I'm going to do this pretty quickly. Oh, that's so funny. I have that same... I must have done the same thing on my other card because I have a little, a little smear of paint right in that same area. Uh, we're going to do this pretty quickly so that way our background will still be a little wet if we want to charge in a little color on the edges because that adds a little bit of depth. I think it also gives it a really artsy flair when you can kind of have uh, multi-colors in an area. Now I can go right over this because I resisted on the uh, stem so I don't even have to paint around. 
which is really cool. And now I'm going to take a little bit that, of that uh, phthalo blue, make it a little bit darker, and add that in there. Just kind of let it run. And you can layer it up, like I could say, okay, I really want this darker, it would look prettier if it's darker, and I can go in and do another layer. So if you're not happy with it, just keep on going until you like it. And if you're never happy with it, if you decide that it's just not the look you want, well, you know, it's only a piece of paper. And you learn something, you either succeed or you fail. I mean, you either succeed or you learn, I should say, if you fail, you've learned something. And it's not necessarily that your work's a failure, it's just that maybe that technique isn't your favorite, or um, maybe you decide you want to try a different color scheme next time. There's uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you decide later, because watercolor tends to dry a little bit lighter, if you decide later that you wished you'd gone in with more color around the edge here and there, you can take a little colored pencil and you can just gently um, add colored pencil to it. Now something I kind of like to do after I get the, that background in is determine, gee, do I want a little bit more color somewhere? And I really like to add like a little bit more of my darker color around the center because you usually have a little more shadow in there and it's... Um, it's a little bit deeper in color, so I like to go in and just throw throw a little bit of color in the center. It gives it a little bit of depth. Now, the reason these colors look really bright and vibrant together is because they're complementary colors. That means that your colors are opposite on the color wheel. So orange and, um, and blue are opposite, so they make each other really vibrant and sing when you put them next to each other. If you mix those two colors together, they make mud. They cancel each other out. So opposite colors will either neutralize if you mix them, or they will make each other seem more prominent if you um, if you put them next to each other. I'm going to put that little really watered down red and put that little five cent box there. And now we're going to let that dry again. Now we can turn this into a card, and I wanted to get a kind of a vintage postcard feeling to this, so I'm just using my trusty old deckle scissors, and you know, I just, I love a deckled edge. That is something that I will never tire of, I don't think. Um, and I'm just going around the edges. You could also just tear it. Just hold like a ruler against the paper and just tear off the excess if you wanted to, and it would give you pretty much the exact same look, or you could just trim it straight if you prefer a straight edge that's totally fine too. I'm going to use some old kind of map paper to uh, to make my card. I've got a piece of craft card stock. I like the look of this. Um, if you really want to make it match well, what you can do is take the ink pad that you had uh, stamped with and you could give everything or all your pattern paper layers some of that ink. I didn't do that on the other ones, but I think that'll look just fine. I don't really want to get the ink on my table, so what I'm going to do is actually put my double-sided tape right down on there. I'm working on a silicone mat, but since it's white, it tends to stain. So I'll go ahead and put my double-sided tape right on there using score tape because my ATG gun is downstairs. But either would work just fine. And we'll just plop that right on there. You could um, tear the edges or curl the edges if you wanted to. Um, like I did here, I just basically just kind of curled it around, kind of bent it around my finger and, and got it distressed that way. But you can do whatever you like. Uh, now I'm going to take this uh, panel and I'm just going to tear it down a bit because I like that white edge. So to get that white edge, what you want to do is tear the edge towards you. And so the remaining paper that's in your left hand is going to be is going to have that white edge and the paper you're tearing off will have no white edge. So if you tear towards you, the piece you're tearing off will have no white edge and the piece that's remaining will have a white will have the white edge. Hopefully that makes sense. Sometimes it's tough to explain that sort of thing. All right. I like that pretty well. I'm determining if I want to have any lace trim. I'd been I just kind of grabbed a few uh, different laces that I had uh, before I started to make some cards today. I'll use a little bit of lace trim. I don't need that much, but I've got a, I've got a little stain on there, so I'm going to cut that off. I keep my lace in um, 
in bird cages so I can just pull out the piece that I want. But the only problem with that is sometimes they get dusty. I don't. I, I think some of these were um, were in kind of rough shape <laughs> when I put them in there. But so it's a little wasteful. But I didn't want the um, discolored lace on the card. You could always uh, stain them with a little coffee or tea dye or even with watercolor because it's porous and you could get a custom lace color that way. Up there. Again, I'm going to use my score tape. I like to do batches of cards. Um, they make really nice gifts and something that I'll do is I'll actually cut out a bunch of extra sentiments so that if you are um, giving this to giving like a batch of cards to somebody for a gift, you could have a few extra sentiments. So if say they need an extra, especially a, a card set like this where everything is, um, it could be for any occasion. So like if somebody needs an extra happy birthday or an extra thank you or an extra sympathy or something, they can, they could just paste it over uh, or replace the one that you've put on there. Or you can go and not put any sentiments on and you can, um, like I just have that just because there, but if somebody needed like a uh, birthday, they could just either paste that on top or they could remove it and put that on there. Just give some options if you're doing this as a gift set. Or of course you can wait and uh, and put them put them on later. So I like the birthday wishes. I think that's a nice nice one. We always need extra birthday sentiments. So I'm just gonna figure out where I want to have that. I kind of like it a little off centered. Um, I've got some buttons here. If I'm doing a batch of cards, oh that one's got a string on it already. Uh, if I'm doing a batch of cards I really like to simplify by keeping my my supplies the same so I'm gonna use buttons on everything. I'm gonna use lace trim and I just kinda keep everything uniform like that so I don't end up having to kind of reinvent the wheel with every card and once you have that basic card design everything goes pretty quickly. So um, if you want to add a string to a button, what I like to do, and this makes it perfectly matching, is I just go to whatever pattern paper I have left, like my off cuts, and I trim a little sliver off of the, um, off the edge of one of my papers, and then I just thread that through the button, and it just gives me a really nice, uh, really nice matching threaded button, and it's so much quicker because sometimes it's hard to thread a button because you can't get the, the thread to go because uh, it wants to split on you and whatnot and this is so quick. And of course you could use your watercolors to paint any paper like if it wasn't just right just take your watercolors give it a wash of paint and it might wrinkle the paper but honestly I think that kind of looks really cool and something I like for adhering the buttons I do have a bottle of wet glue open and going but especially if I've got these little tail ends I want to secure down I just take a piece of score tape and then I fold, I cut, I kind of tear it a little long, then I fold the edges back, I make sure I trap those legs down, and then I just do that and adhere my buttons on. Or if they're smaller, I might grab some glue. My glue's in kind of a hot mess state right now because it's been, started leaking from the neck of the glue bottle for, for some reason, I'm not sure why. But yeah, I've got kind of a cup of glue. This, this glue is not long for the world. This stuff does dry really quick, so that's the uh, that's what it's got going for it. It is a mess though, and I think I'll use a little foam tape for my sentiment. We're such a simple card. We have three different adhesives happening. Sometimes, if I'm worried about the state of my foam tape or something, I will add glue as well, just so if it ever dries out, I'll still have the dimension, but I'll have some liquid glue kind of being my safeguard. Oops, no, I wanted that a little higher. Can I move it? Oh, I think I can. Usually have a second or two, you can remove your adhesive. I wanted it just a sliver higher. And there we go. So there is that card. That was a lot of fun to make. I'm going to show you the other ones in case you prefer a different stamp or maybe you want to add all of them to your collection. They are gorgeous. That's the uh, obviously the one I showed you at the beginning. Um, this one is fun. I masked um, the white, then the mid yellow, and the, then, the, then I masked everything after I got the bright yellow, the darker yellow in, and then I just did washes and splatters on the background. This one you can clearly see where I put the white. On this one, um, 
I went over the background with a couple layers of color because I really wanted that those daffodils to pop. And on this one, I used a little colored pencils in the corners to uh, help it kind of get that nice vintage rougey frame in there. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up if you like it. And I'll have all these products linked down below so you can find them. And I hope you give it a try because it is a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.